Okay, this is the first video in our calculus course. Uh, we're going to talk about the prerequisites for calculus. These, these are, we're continuing with the things that uh, you should come into here having learned already and, you know, hopefully review and you have, we will have our first test on chapter one. So we're going to define and use functions. Uh, oops, I uh, already got a mistake there. Woo! Got a, uh, let me put it in there. Functions. Uh, uh, we want to review domain and range. Uh, we want to talk about uh, viewing and interpreting graphs. We want to talk about when functions are even, odd. They can be neither, but when they are even and odd, there's special things that go on there. Uh, piecewise defined functions, absolute value functions, and we'll even talk about uh, composite functions. So first thing, when we're talking about domain and range, okay? So domain, I want you to think of it as like all the x values that are in that function, and the range is pretty much all the y values you're going to hit. That's a, that's a really good general idea of, uh, of what domain and range are. Now, when you're thinking of domain, okay, think of what x can't be. So, uh, for instance, if, if x is, if the function is f of x equals square root of x, well, we know you can't put a negative in here. So your x would be, it can be 0, it will be greater than or equal to 0. Uh, let's say that if you have a denominator somewhere, let's say this uh, some other function, g of x, is equal to the function, you know, 3 over x plus 2. Well, we got an x in the denominator. What can you not have in the denominator? Zero. You can't divide by zero, right? Otherwise, you, you get a black hole, and then uh, everything bad happens. Uh, it's because someone divided by zero. So we don't want to do that. So here, x cannot be 2. And some college professors just say, no, you can get, you know, they, they say, oh, that's not the domain. That's what the domain isn't. So when they, when they want the domain, they, you, you might have to put, oh, it's everything except for 2, union here, 2, all the way to infinity. So that is technically the domain for a function like this. Now, this one's an easy one. It's just a general function. I'm actually going to sort of graph it, okay? And um, don't worry if this is kind of, you know, kind of weird, but I'm just going to roughly sketch it. You can, you can graph it in your TI-84 by hitting the little Y equals button and just plug this in and get a good idea of what this looks like. Uh, let's see. So this thing is going to have a domain of... Well, it's not a square root function, so I don't have to worry about Kent having some sort of you know negative square root in there. It doesn't have a denominator. So here our domain is actually easy. In, in the general, uh, any polynomial function, uh, just a heads up, your domain is always going to be all reals. Always, always, always. So here it's going to be from negative infinity to infinity if you want to write it in integral notation. Uh, our range, that might be a little harder for you, but uh, to give you an idea, if you did graph this, you would see it looks like an upside down parabola. So, right, it's negative x squared. So, it's going to look something like this. I promise you it'll look something like that. And what you'll notice is that um, it'll have a, like a maximum right here at negative 8. And then it, it won't hit any range values above that because it, it's pointing down. So, your range is going to be, uh, you know, as low as negative infinity because it just keeps going down forever and it goes all the way up to negative 8. So that's what your domain and range uh, there are. Uh, you can either say all reals or negative infinity to infinity. Or you can even put uh, another way of saying all reals is uh, you put an R and then you put like a line like that. That's shorthand for all real numbers. Um, but we'll, if, if the range part can threw you off, like, wait, how did he get that? Don't worry, we'll do some more practice with those later, and uh, it, it'll start to catch on, but it really helps to visualize it uh, when you're doing the range. All right, what, what about the domain for this? All right, remember how we looked back and said, all right, the only things you really need to worry about are when, when you have a square root. It's like, oh, we can't have a negative in there. And if we have a denominator, you can't have a zero in the denominator. That's a really good rule for domain. So here's the thing. We can't have the thing in the square root be negative. When, when you're negative, you're less than zero. So let's make the thing in the square root. Let's, uh, I'm sorry, you, you, you're you never going to have a negative square root. That is true. But I want to take the thing in the square root, and I want to make that uh, if you want, you can say, I want to make that greater or equal to zero. Because it's okay for this to be zero. It's not okay for this to be less than zero, uh, which would be negative. All right, so um, we're going to find all value, valid values by, I'm going to add three on both sides. So x is greater than or equal to three. So these are the okay values because you can be greater than or equal to zero. Therefore, my domain is uh, x is greater than or equal to 3, or you can write it this way. That's one way to write it. You can write, well, if x is greater than or equal to 3, remember you go 3 to infinity. All right, we put parentheses when we want to not include it. What do we put when we want to include greater than or equal to 3? We put the 
bracket. So I, I really like it in notation, uh, but inequality notation is fine too. Uh, that does work. Now if we want to graph this, I'm just going to do a rough sketch. We want to graph this function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my y-axis, draw my x-axis. If it helps, you could just plot a few points. Maybe you're not super great at visualizing functions. Well, the easiest way to do it is just plot some points. Now, we, it, this one's kind of easy. We actually have a starting point. You can't go lower than 3. If you try to put 2 as an x value in this, look what happens. Let's see, square root of plug in 2 for x minus 3. We get square root of negative 1, uh, which is, if you remember from algebra 1, that's, that's equal to i, but that's not a real number. Like, you can't plot i here. Like, I can't plot, uh, you know, 2 comma i. It, it doesn't exist. It's not on this. This is not the... Uh, imaginary or you know complex plane I can't do that so 2 is not a valid value my first valid value is 3 when x is 3 right plug in 3 for x I get square root of 3 minus 3 then y is 0 all right and then if you want to go let, let's plot another one 4 all right 4 minus 3 is 1 what's the square root of 1 1 all right then let's plug in uh, if we plugged in a 5 let's see 5 minus 3 uh, your y value will be square root of 2 I can't simplify that any further uh, but I'll do one that I can simplify. I know that my next perfect square is uh, 4. So when x is you know 6, I'm going to get square root of 3. But I want to do 7 here. I'm going to get square root of 4, which is 2. So these are some points. 3 comma 0, 4 comma 1, 7 comma 2. So I'm just going to roughly sketch this. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so I've got 3 comma 0. I've got 4, comma 1, and then the next like valid point I can really plot is 7, comma 2, and I'm going to do just roughly trace that. And a general square root function, if you graph this in your calculator, you'd notice it. It looks like, uh, I guess a good way to describe it is kind of like half of a sideways pointing parabola. So a parabola would look like this. You'll notice a square root function is going to look like if I took this and pointed it sideways. Uh, that's what a square root function is generally going to look like. You'll get used to the, recognizing those shapes. All right, now we're going to do composite functions like f composed of g. So let's say we have uh, so we have f composed of g, or and we want to write g composed of x. Now remember what, what this means is like I like to, I don't like to write it this way. I'm going to rewrite this one f of g of x. This is the way I like to see it. It really helps me. And this right here, the golf, I'm going to write g of f of x. What that means is inside the f's x you put the g so for f of g of x you put g inside where you know the x was so this right here goes into uh, the x for this gets substituted in so f of g of x which is just another way of writing f composed with g is equal to 6 replace the x with g 3 minus 4x and then minus 1. You can if you want. You can distribute like this is correct, but we could simplify that. 18 minus 24x uh, minus 1, which would be 17. Simplify the 18 minus 1 minus 24x. And that would be f of g of x um, or f composed of g of x would be this function right here. Alright, to do g composed of f, we do just the opposite. So if we don't want to do g composed of f of x, we put f at, at like f takes the place of um, of g's domain value. So in, in this case, we, instead of putting, you know, like x right here, we, we put the f function into the x here, so that's going to be uh, 3 minus 4 times, and here I'm going to put 6x minus 1 and then I'll just simplify this g of f of x equals 3 minus 24x minus 4 so I get 3, see 3 minus 4, negative 1, so I get uh, this would be negative 1 plus 24x or uh, I'm sorry, negative 1 minus 24x, so it would be negative 24x minus 1 is going to be that thing right there, g composed of f all right, that's composition functions. Now we're going to talk about, um, we're going to identify domain and range again. We're going to roughly sketch the graph. Uh, this thing right here, 1 over x minus 7. All right, now this is not a square root function. We don't have to worry about any negatives in the radical. What do we have to worry about? Zero in the denominator. You can't have your denominator be zero. So let's do this. I'm going to write 
my, here's my denominator. I want that to not be 0. So solve for x, you add 7 on both sides. That means x cannot be equal to 7. Now, some people put that, you know, like they might put all reals for your domain except 7. And some teachers are okay with that. That makes perfect sense to me, and I, I like it written that way. Just know that some people are sticklers. You know, they want you to write everything that it is, negative infinity, up to 7, not inclusive. Union, 7, all the way to positive infinity. So uh, be responsive to whatever your professor or teacher, uh, however they want you to write it. That's your domain. Now, the range, it's going to be a little harder here. Now, you could just plot some points. You could do your table, your x, your y. I would suggest you, you're going to get familiar with these kind of things here. Let's let's do um, let's do some you know values. I'm gonna go and do let's plug in like a six for x, okay? So one over six minus seven, you get negative one. You can work that out yourself. Let's put a seven in here. Oh well, you can't do that. You get uh, one divided by zero, which you know. So we can't plug a seven in there. But I want you to picture this. Let's say we did six point five, okay? Well, that would be let's see six point five divided by 6.5 minus 7 would give you negative 0.5. When you divide 1 by 0.5, you actually get 2, negative 2. What if we did 6.9? All right. If you plug in uh, 6.9 here, it's 1 over 0.1. 1 over, actually, negative 0.1. If you take 1 and divide it by a tenth, dividing by a tenth is the same thing as multiplying by 10 over 1, so it's going to be negative 10. And if you notice, the pattern here, if you do, you know, put 6.99, these are all legal values, as long as it's not 7, but if I keep getting closer to 7, it makes this thing more negative. Like, there's only going to be negative 100th difference here. And it goes the opposite way if you go the other way. You can't do 7, but if you do 7.01, well, if I do 7.01, uh, you know, minus 7, I get 0 0.01 over, or 1 over 0 0.01, that's going to be positive 100. You know, if I put 7.1, that's going to be a tenth. It could be positive 10. So what happens is you get a graph that kind of looks like this. So here's your y-axis. Uh, here's your x-axis. And notice how before I identify the range, I'm actually graphing it. It's the best way to find the range is to, to picture it because uh, it's a little harder to just generate it with just math. Um, we're going to go, uh, let's see here. We're going to have... Um, I'm going to plot my points, 6, comma, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, actually I'm going to need my scale a lot bigger, because uh, this goes all the way to like, you know, just here it goes up to like 100, uh, but uh, let's just do 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so I've got, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to go 6, negative 1. Okay, 6, negative 1. And then if I go to 6 and a half, it goes all the way down to negative 2. And if I do 6.9, it goes all the way down to negative 10. And if I do 6.99, it goes all the way down to negative 100. So it, it kind of does, um, you know, little, just kind of like sinks and plummets right here. Right, it just kind of like tapers off, boom, like this. And if you want an idea of like what it is, is to, uh, let, let's let's plug this thing at zero. I'm gonna do one over zero minus seven, just so I have a value to kind of anchor it to. Uh, so it's gonna be one over negative seven. So it's gonna be negative one seventh. So it'll be kind of like right there. It'll be very close to the origin. Um, and if we go to uh, and any value less than this, it'll always be negative. Um, uh, if we go on the other side, it's going to have just like a very similar shape, except it's going to taper up like this. And these are positive values. And if you, this is called a vertical asymptote right here. So your range, your domain is everything but 7. Your range is actually, it goes down to infinity, goes up to infinity. Your range is actually all real numbers. Okay? All right, that is a, that is a part one of the video, and I will continue the rest uh, in just a second. Schools are in emails. Visit our website at sgcrypto.org.